I believe home ownership is the path to financial independence. It's something that ordinary people are, are able to do and over the long term are able to build some substantial uh, uh, wealth for themselves. But just owning a home is not enough to ensure wealth or financial independence. Uh, it's the choices that you make while you're there that allow that to occur. This has happened for millions upon millions of American families who have owned homes and as those homes have grown in value, they've benefited. But owning a home in and of itself is not enough. It's the financial choices that you make during that time that you own the home that allow that wealth to build. So buying a house and then refinancing it when it goes up in value and then spending that money is not the path to wealth. That's the path to short-term financial windfalls. And that's something that, that happens quite a lot. People are, are, you know, we back in the early 2000s, prices were skyrocketing and, and people were refinancing. Interest rates were really low, uh, pulling money out and then enjoying what that money could buy at that point in time. And that's essentially uh, rating your long-term wealth for short-term enjoyment. And that's a choice, but it's not a choice that leads to financial independence and, and the building of some personal wealth. So when you own a home, if, if you see that as your nest egg, if you see that the way that, that generations past have seen home ownership, there, there'll be decisions that you make or, or choose not to make that will allow you to build some financial independence. And the first is don't pull money out of your home. If, if you are going to refinance it, and there are times when it's appropriate, if there's a significant drop in interest rates or something much more attractive, you can pull money out and there'll be a module on, on refinancing because there's pros and cons. It can be a little deceptive. Uh, owning a home for 10 years, refinancing, and getting another 30-year mortgage. You know, the rates just went down, but it went back to 30 years. So we'll uh, get into that elsewhere. Um, but, but be very cautious about refinancing. Uh, pulling money out to spend today as opposed to allowing that to grow and build value uh, is what uh, a good many people do when they refinance. And that's just, that's, that undoes the wealth building benefit of home ownership. But we don't have to move as often, making the choice to stay longer, to, to enjoy and find ways to enjoy the home that we're in, maybe, maybe some, some well-selected, cautiously selected upgrades that might make it more enjoyable, uh, maybe connecting more with the community and the neighborhood and finding ways to make staying in your home more attractive to you is certainly uh, a, a, a smart financial choice. Staying longer in every home you own is, is a, a, an important choice when it comes to, to building some wealth and your home is a financial vehicle. Being very cautious about upgrades. Most upgrades, in fact nearly all upgrades, will, will increase the value of the home less than they cost to put in, and some substantially. I mean, you could spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a pool, and it will increase the value of the home ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. That's like driving the car off the lot. There's a lot of depreciation there. Uh, other other improvements, you'll get nearly all of your money back. So you upgrade that kitchen for for ten thousand dollars, and it's the house is now worth perhaps nine thousand more. Um, so making choices on upgrades that you will, one, enjoy uh, and you're doing for personal benefit uh, as well as will enhance the value of the house is, is a, a, a good choice if done cautiously and, and selectively. Um, just spending money to fix up the house thinking that you're, you're building value um, you're, you're not. You're, you're losing value on that money but hopefully increasing the enjoyment. So there's that trade-off there. Care for and maintain a property. Uh, uh, a well cared for home shows the care. It shows uh, when, when something breaks or goes wrong, have it fixed. Things, uh, uh, problems in a home can snowball. So if you've got a, a small leak or a drip under that faucet, it's not a big deal to have that corrected. Get a plumber in, or if you're handy at all, you can, 
you can get a new gasket in there or, or find that repair. But if you don't address it, the water is now going to cause dry rot and now you've got to replace uh, the sink and, and the wall behind it. Damage tends to grow when in a home when things are not corrected. The elements are constantly attacking the home. So taking care of it and seeing that it's properly maintained will preserve the inherent, that intrinsic value of the home, which is just going to grow uh, with inflation, it will cycle up and down, but, but it's going to grow long term because that utility is always there if you take care of it. So the care and maintenance is an important topic. A home is a long term financial vehicle from an investment standpoint. There will be cycles. Real estate values will cycle up and down, but long term they always increase pretty close to the, the pace of inflation. And, and so long term, that will work for you. If you're buying a home and it runs up in value and you pull that value out um, and, and spend it, um, there's a very good chance that the next cycle will come back down and, and you can be underwater. And this, this happened to millions of, of people back in the, the 2000s who lost their homes. Um, so market timing for people for families for individuals can be a difficult thing to do knowing when to buy and when to sell and your life isn't usually organized around market cycles so pulling the kids out of high school so you can sell at a market peak assuming you feel confident timing that um, is not typically well received by the family it's these are life events that drive typical home uh, purchase and sales for families. Now an investor uh, might be in a better position to buy and sell based on market cycles, but it's very difficult to arrange a family's uh, life around uh, real estate market cycles. Over the past decade, we've seen fortunes made and lost in, in real estate. Um, they, they boomed up to about 2005 or six and then really just fell apart for seven, eight years after that, and then have been recovering uh, since and have restored much of that value you know, 10 years later. Debt is an unavoidable part of home ownership for most of us. We've got to borrow the money to be able to buy something of, of this scale, uh, uh, something as valuable as this. But debt is, is a destroyer of wealth, making payments all your life uh, on debt with interest, and the interest is the you know the does isn't equity. It's just what you're paying to be able to use that money. And even though interest rates are really good right now, a lot uh, in the first payments, a high percentage of of what you're making in a mortgage payment is actually going to to simply interest. It's going as profit for the financial institution. So there's no way around it for most of us. You've got to borrow money to buy the home, but you can decide not to stay in debt, which is when you have the mortgage, you pay it off. You try not to pull money out. You try not to refinance unless there's a really good reason for it. You don't extend that horizon back to 30 years if you do refinance. Pay it off, and you can, for most loans, or at least many, for many loans, you can actually pay that debt sooner. And you might talk to your lender to find out can we pay a little extra each month? In those first years, that may be difficult to do. But once, once you've gotten yourself established in a home, you can start adding um, to the equity payment in a, in a mortgage. So that might be worth talking to your lender about. But if you can own a home free and clear, uh, you are in such a strong financial position to build wealth. And that, that just takes a lot of years of disciplined pain of the mortgage and, and being disciplined with your finances. But it is a great way to build wealth, is to own your home, pay down that mortgage, pay it off as, as you know, sooner if at all possible, don't pull money out, and allow that to simply grow over time. And you'll end up uh, with quite a lot of value at the end of um, a long time frame. Paying that mortgage consistently over time, perhaps paying extra, not pulling money out, not refinancing, not extending the length of, of uh, that mortgage, 
paying it consistently over time will allow the asset to grow, the equity to build, and your wealth to increase.